Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how you can build a tool wall like this. I use it for storing all my 3D printing tools. You can equip it with a variety of different hooks, boxes and shelves. There are also adapters to attach other systems such as parts of the honeycomb wall or gridfinity. With this system, you can find the fitting holder for all of your tools, and it's called the multi-board. But before we start printing, a quick word about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. At PCBWay, you can get your parts made according to your wishes. They offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding. All you have to do is upload your 3D file and you can immediately see how much your part will cost and how long it will take to produce. This way you don't have to buy expensive machines and can have the production done by professionals. Which is pretty convenient. You can choose from a variety of different materials, including different types of 3D printed metal, which I find very exciting and will show you in my next video. Now back to the multiboard. The first thing we do is go to the homepage of Jonathan, inventor of the multiboard. Under resources you go to the parts library and there you will find all the different parts, organized by categories. This makes it very easy. There are all kinds of hooks, adapters, shelves and screws, but let's start with the tiles, to which all the accessories are attached. There are predefined sizes, I choose the 7x7 seven seven tiles for my printer as they fit exactly on my print bed. There are three different versions of each size, namely for the corner, the side and the core tiles. Here I have downloaded a side tile and loaded it into the slicer. It takes my printer, with the standard settings for PLA, 2 hours and 45 minutes to print one tile. I have set a brim, and the infill to 15% and printed in gyroid. Then send the sliced part to the printer and there we go. I print with marble white PLA from Polyterra, at 250 mm per second and 220 degrees Celsius. The bed adhesion is good, I only had problems with some warping on one tile, but I printed that one without a brim. I could have adjusted the Z offset better, and I saw increasing problems with under extrusion while printing the 12 tiles. I think it has to do with the nozzle and I will change it sometime soon. In the meantime I have increased the temperature a little and continued printing with the same nozzle. This doesn't fix anything, but it does help a little with the symptoms. Next I print these snaps that hold the plates together and you need a lot of them. These are the parts I start with, in addition to the connector and support pieces, I've already printed some hooks, screws and spacers. But to start with you will need several of these double snaps. You can also see some under extrusion on these pieces, except for the top two ones. This is because I printed these two lying down instead of in an upright position. Well, that's obviously better. You see, I rotated these double snaps in the slicer because I thought it made more sense that way. It does not. I should have just left them in the original position. In addition to better print quality, they are also more robust in this orientation than the ones printed upright. We don't need these parts for the time being, first I have to do some finishing work on the tiles. The brim has made for slightly better bed adhesion, but in some areas it's a bit too melted into the part. That must suck, and you have to do it 12 times. Shut up, it wasn't that bad, I also had very slight stringing, but it didn't stand a chance against the mini torch. This is taking way too long. That's better. And these are the finished tiles I need for this project. The tiles differ in the number of these connector sides with the pointed ends. This one has them on two neighboring sides. These are the core tiles and I need 5 of them. Then there are these with only one side, these are the side tiles, of which I need 6. And then there are those that don't have any of these corners. And they are called corner tiles. That makes no sense. I only need one of them, and they're called that because you use them to close off the last corner of the finished multiboard. I want to mount the multiboard on this piece of wood instead of screwing it directly to the wall. So I drawn it on and then sawed it out with a handsaw. To make it fit better in terms of shape, I cut the corners at a 45 degree angle and then filed all the sides. Because it was a scrap piece, it has a couple of drill holes that I have to seal with this special wax things. You can melt it with a lighter and then rub it into the drill holes. With such smaller holes, you can also just drip the liquid wax into them. 
It hardens very quickly and then you can level it with a scraper. And finally, I go over the whole board with a sander for a smooth finish. Now it's time to put everything together. After you have arranged the different tiles according to your wishes, the first thing you need are these double snaps with 8mm spacing. As the name suggests, they click into the holes of the tiles and hold them together, no need for much force. To connect four plates you need this so-called quad snap connector. If you want to do it right, you would connect two panels each from below with the double snaps, and then connect them from above with this one. But since I only realized this when I have already printed all the parts, I use this quad connector from the bottom side instead, which is actually intended to mount the plates without the 8mm spacing I have on all the other parts. The fit is quite tight, and a bit of gentle force with the rubber mallet can help to connect the parts. For the corners you need four of these single connectors, and again the version with 8mm spacing. They go in easily, so no hammer needed this time. As you can see, the middle of my multiboard is still bending a lot because I chose the wrong connectors without the 8mm spacing. But Jonathan has also created a solution for this, in the form of these small spacers, which can be screwed into the smaller intermediate holes. However, you should not overdo it when screwing them in, as they can easily break off if too much force is applied. Well done! By the way, what I use here for screwing in is the multiboard multi-tool. There are two different ones and they make assembly much easier. Now let's repair the broken one. With glue? Really? Just print it again. It's just a spacer, that should work. This here by the way, is a better version of the spacers consisting of two parts that interlock more or less easy. Yes, I can see that. The thread on this version is printed horizontally, which makes it a lot more stable and less likely to break. Would be good if you had known that earlier. Well, now you know. As everything is now put together, I can mark the drill holes on the wood. I use this small drill bit in all the places where the multi-board is attached to the plate. And this slightly wider drill bit for the holes in the corners where I want to attach the whole thing to the wall. I use these small 10mm screws to attach the board to the wood. I really struggled to get a good grip on it and show it to the camera here. There you go. They were the shortest screws I had lying around at home, but still a bit too long for this purpose so I cut off the excess with the Dremel. Nice and smooth. Now the connectors for the upper side can be attached. On each of these snap parts there is this fine line that you have to pay attention to when assembling so that the parts fit together well. If you don't do this, you will have a hard time putting it together. They connect to the snaps that were mounted from below and thus provide even more stability. And even if you mount them the right way round you need a hammer or something equivalent to get them in. The same applies to these double snaps. Look where that line is and make sure they are aligned with the lower part before you smash them in. At this point I realized that I still needed the counterparts for the snaps in the corners that I had forgotten to print. So I quickly printed those four pieces and put them in. And this is what my finished multi-board looks like. I use these concrete anchors to attach it to the wall. And I use four of those long screws. For easy installation, I screw them into the multi-board, so I can put the whole thing into the wall anchor straight away. As the multi-board has recently been launched and new parts are being released all the time, I will be making a video with the best attachments at a later date. If you are interested in that, let me know in the comments. There will also be more upgrade videos for the 3D printer again but next video I'll show you this crossbow slingshot blaster I made as a fun build for in the meantime. If you don't want to miss this, subscribe to the channel and if you like the video please leave a thumbs up. I promise next time will be better and I'll see you there.